My name is Marsha Harris, but today I'm dressed as Fanny Bixby and one of my many costumes is her. Well, I volunteer about 60 hours a week now that I retired, but um, my favorite place to volunteer is here at Rancho Los Cerritos where Fanny Bixby was born in the 1800s. Well, being I was a teacher and I like poetry and since Fanny was a poet, I was going to write a book, a poetry book, all about her for children and I was here doing tours and a man from the History Press came and heard all my stories and he said, you really should put them in a book and he said he would be willing to get it edited and published and all that. So I said, okay. So I did it for that reason and also the rancho gets some money off of it. And then this book is the one that was written and you can get it all over, all about Fanny. It tells lots of good stories and there's lots of good pictures. This wasn't the picture I wanted for the title, for the front cover. I wanted this picture that shows Fanny being the first policewoman of the uh, area and actually of the whole country if you don't count a sheriff in the 1890s. But um, they said the publishers thought it looked like she was being arrested rather than being on the police force. So they suggested this picture. I also didn't want this title. I wanted it to be Finding Fascinating Fanny, but they said that was too sexy. Well, some people say I'm like her, but um, she was a very giving person and she gave to everybody and helped everybody. She's also did lots for women's rights. And if you're a man, you might not like this, but she got rid of the red light district in Los Angeles. And she gave to helping all different ethnic backgrounds. Her mother, who started the first congregational church in Long Beach, and they would have group meetings and they would be sitting there talking. And when the San Francisco earthquake came in 1906, they were all talking about how horrible it was. And Fanny said, instead of talking about it, we should do something. And she just took up a train and went up there and helped, and not just the people that were rich, she helped all the people. She lived in the tenement houses and did all of that. So I like the fact that she was a doer, not just a sayer. And she always helped people, not just charities. She gave to charities that asked, but mostly she did it for the ones that didn't ask that she knew needed to be helped. Like the Russian community in the newly Russians that arrived in Los Angeles. She took care of those. And, and when she was in Costa Mesa, she was shocked to find out that the children would come to school without any food, so she started a peanut butter and jelly and milk program for lunches. And then she decided she wanted them to have silverware and learn all about good manners, so she gave her silver to the school and she helped with the settlement houses. And she studied um, sociology, which was a brand new skill at that time, a brand new major. And um, then, when she in Long Beach, she helped with anybody that was off the streets. People were coming because they had the Balboa movie studios. So young girls were coming because they thought they were going to be in the movies, and men were taking advantage of them. So she was actually hired as the first policewoman to take care of unescorted women and children. So she helped with those, and many were from other countries as well. But mostly she is famous for doing things with the Japanese, and they weren't allowed to own land. So Fanny bought plots of land and managed them, but let the Japanese farm workers get the profits. And um, she would do all the books, and they got to keep the profits. And that's why she adopted 14 children. And of the 14 children, 13 of them were um, different ethnic backgrounds. That's why she was kicked out of Long Beach, because you weren't allowed to have different ex ethnic backgrounds. Some of her children became people, congressmen and things, and they helped other people. So she helped them to be involved, and then they helped others, which was great. Well, if Fanny Bixby were alive today, she would definitely be against anti-war and military because she was, ever since she was a little child, she thought war was horrible. That's why she didn't even like Boy Scouts because she thought they were like a military in kindergarten age. But um, she worked really hard against anti-war and in World War I, she had the job of having to go tell the soldiers, uh, wives or girlfriends that were left behind when their person was deceased and she had to bring back something from them to prove that they were dead and that just tore her apart and her daughter said that um, during World War II if she would have been alive she would have taken all the Jewish people in her house to protect them. There was a boy that she took care of saving from a severe court case that they were going to execute him just because of the color of his skin and sometimes that still happens and she'd be shocked that there would be so many of colored in the prisons today. She's just an interesting character so I just like her so much. So I enjoyed researching her. I spent 10 years looking to find out about her. And I even bought her car, her 1926 Roadster pickup Model T Ford. 
Well, it's for sale at Rancho Los Cerritos, and they do have some that are autographed as well. And then you can buy it on Amazon, and you can buy it at Barnes and Noble, and lots of different places online. It's nationwide and worldwide. It's even some other languages, which I'm surprised. Well, I always thought they should have a movie made after her, so I'm glad that you're making a little clip of her life. But, um, you know, she's just a fascinating person, and the more I find out about her and how much she influenced people, I'm just always fascinated by it. I always tell people, come to Rancho Los Cerritos or invite me to come tell her story. Thank you.